In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. peace be with you. And with your spirit. We come celebrating these sacred mysteries, knowing the incredible love of God. And we have this memorial of St. Therese of the Child Jesus, Virgin Doctor of the Church. As we come to celebrate, let us ask God's mercy. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive our sins. Bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who open your kingdom to those who are humble, and to little ones, lead us to follow trustingly in the little way of St. Therese, so that through her intercession, we may see your eternal glory revealed through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Job. Then Job replied, How long will you torment me and crush me with words? Ten times now you have reproached me. Shamelessly you have attacked me. If it is true that I have gone astray, my error remains my concern alone. If indeed you would exalt yourself above me and use my humiliation against me, then God that then know that God has wronged me and drawn his net around me. Though I cry violence, I get no response. Though I call for help, there is no justice. He has blocked my way so I cannot pass. He has shrouded my paths in darkness. He has stripped me of my honor and removed the crown from my head. He tears me down on every side till I am gone. He uproots my hope like a tree. His anger burns against me. He counts me among his enemies. His troops advance in force. They build a siege ramp against me and encamp around my tent. He has alienated my family from me. My acquaintances are completely estranged from me. My relatives have gone away. My closest friends have forgotten me. My guests and my female servants count me as a foreigner. They look on me as a stranger. I summon my servant, but he does not answer, though I beg him with my own mouth. My breath is offensive to my wife. I am loathsome to my own family. Even the little boys scorn me. When I appear, they ridicule me. All my intimate friends detest me. Those I love have turned against me. I am nothing but skin and bones. I have escaped only by the skin of my teeth. Pity me, pity me, you, my friends, for the hand of God has struck me. Why do you hound me down like God? Will you never have enough of my flesh? Ah, would that these words of mine were written down, inscribed on some monument, with iron chisel and engraving tool, cut into the rock forever. This I know, that my avenger lives that he, the last, will take his stand on earth. After my awakening, he will set me close to him, and from my flesh I shall look on God. He whom I shall see will take my part. These eyes will gaze on him and find him not aloof. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Response. 
I am sure that I shall see the Lord's goodness in the land of the living. I am sure that I will see the Lord's goodness in the land of the living. O Lord, hear my voice when I call. Have mercy and answer. Of you my heart has spoken. Seek his face. I am sure that I will see the Lord's goodness in the land of the living. It is your face, O Lord, that I seek. Hide not your face. Dismiss not your servant in anger. You have been my help. I am sure I will see the face of the Lord in the land of the living. I am sure I shall see the Lord's goodness in the land of the living. Hope in him. Hold firm and take heart. Hope in the Lord. I am sure that I will see the face of the Lord in the land of the living. Man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Alle, alle, alle. With you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, o Lord. The Lord appointed seventy two others and sent them out ahead of him in pairs, and all the towns and places he himself was to visit. And he said to them, The harvest is rich, but the laborers are few. So ask the Lord of the harvest to send laborers to his harvest. Start off now, but remember, I am sending you out like lambs among wolves. Carry no purse, no haversack, no sandals. Salute no one on the road. Whatever house you go into, let your first words be peace to this house. And if a man of peace lives there, your peace will go to and rest on him. If not, it will come back to you. Stay in the same house, taking what food and drink they have to offer. For the laborer deserves his wage. Do not move from house to house. Whenever you go into a town where they make you welcome, eat what is set before you. Cure those in it who are sick and say, the kingdom of God is very near at hand. But whenever you enter a town and they do not make you welcome, go out into its streets and say, we wipe off the very dust of your town that clings to our feet and leave it with you. Yet, be sure of this, the kingdom of God is very near. I tell you, on that day, it will not go as hard with Sodom as with that down. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. There's so much in the liturgy today. So we have the little, the little flower, St. Therese of the Child Jesus, which is such a beautiful saint, her little way, doing little things with extraordinary love. She looked at the whole body of Christ and she said, well, if each of us is a part of the body, Lord, what part am I? And then she decided she was a heart because she wanted to bring love to everyone. She's a patron of missions and missionaries because from her cell in the convent, she prayed for the, the most renowned convict and murderer in her day, and he came to repentance. And so she's a missionary because from, from the cloister, she brought someone to repentance through her prayer and her devotion. And so we, we celebrate her today in, in a, a wonderful and extraordinary way. But today we also have the continuing reading of Job. And I know if I don't talk about Job, people calling me all day today. You know how that is going. So as we listen to Job, what I've done today is I've extended the reading that the church has given to the whole of chapter 19 to give you a sense of some of the struggle that Job was having. Chapter 18 ends with 
Baldad, the, one of the friends of, of Job, saying to Job at the end of a long treatise, he says to Job, I know that God cannot be in this house and that you cannot be, and you cannot know God. Well, those are hard and fighting words. Remember, Job keeps protesting his innocence, that, that, that he has done nothing wrong. And, and yet his friends, his friends keep telling him, you can't suffer the way you are suffering and be innocent. Now, I don't know which is worse suffering, the actual physical, mental torture that Job is going through, or the fact that his friends will not even trust or believe what he's telling them about his innocence. Which, is it, which one you think is worse? At least one is piling on top of the other. And, and so Job here gives his answer in, in chapter 19. And, and again, he's affirming his innocence. And, and he's saying, how long will you torment me and crush me with your words? Ten times now you have reproached me. Shamelessly you attack me. So th this is to Job's comforters. Eh? These are the three people who left wherever they were to come to comfort Job. <laughs> I want you to hear, you know, when, when you tell somebody, use Job's comforter or what? That's where it comes from. Because the comforters of Job rather than bringing Job some form of consolation and comfort, actually attack Job and, and believe the worst about Job, that Job is a sinful man who does not know God, and God has abandoned him because of Job's wickedness. Remember the, the, the old formula that they were working with at the time? The, prosperous, the, the, the good will prosper, the, the wicked will suffer. But they turned it on his head and said, anyone who is prospering is good, and anyone who is suffering is wicked. That's not the biblical formula. And, and by turning it on his head, what it does is it means that anyone who is suffering now is suspect of being against God. And anyone who is prospering is suspect of being somebody who God loves and God has blessed. And that's not what the teaching of the, of the Old Testament says. But, but they're playing with this in their head. And, and, and the problem that they're having is that if Job is righteous and suffering, then the only other thing that can give is God. And therefore, God cannot be just. Because if God is just, Job, who is righteous, must not suffer. Because the, the, the good will always prosper. And those who are prospering are always good. And because of this false dilemma in their mind, they, they, they are safeguarding the righteousness of God by maligning Job and putting Job to be seen as the one who must be in the wrong because God has to be in the right. Are you hearing, are you hearing this? Now, we do this in really subtle ways, you know. We do this in and, and not so subtle ways sometimes. Huh? We do this. You know, I've often said there, there are two kinds of, there's only one club, huh? only one club. Two kinds of membership, but one club. The club is the club of sinners. The membership is private or public. And, and we all belong to the one club of sinners. Every single one of us. The only one who was excluded from that club was Mary. And of course, Jesus. Everybody else was born into sin. And so we belong to the club of sinners. But when people move from private to public membership in this club of sinners, something happens. And, 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 and the thing that happens is, is, is what Job experiences. People shun you. People move away from you. People malign you. People imagine the worst about you. People speak all kinds of things about you. And, and they don't have no facts, you know, and they don't need to have facts, you know, because they know more than everybody else. And, and what, what we see here is incredible. You know, there, there was, there's a, a wonderful book called Option B. 
it's a, um, she's a COO of Facebook, and uh, her husband died suddenly. And she writes this incredible work, incredible work, of, of, of what happens in grief. And one of the things she said that she was not prepared for was that people that she thought was really, really close to her actually shunned her, did not speak to her, left her alone, walked away from her, and, and, and she could not understand how people that she thought she was so close to moved so far away from her. And then when she reflects on it, she says, you know, it's, it's nearly like if the people instinctively feel, if lightning strike by you, and I am close to you, I might get lashed with the lightning too. Or they instinctively feel that somehow, you know, the disaster that has fallen upon you is a disaster that I don't want to participate in because I'm afraid for me. And, and, and it leaves the person more isolated than they ought to be. There, there's another wonderful book from, from Beirut to Jerusalem, or Jerusalem to Beirut, I can't remember now. And the author says something similar there in that book. He says that, you know, when in Lebanon the bombing started, the humans found good reason why those people got struck but not us. And, and it was a form of, 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 of real false logic. So people, houses would be blown up. And, and you'd hear the people gathering in the evening. He said, you know, we always told them not to build on that side of the street, you know. We told them not to build on that side because that side of the street was destined to be blown up. It, it is as if we as human beings, when we are confronted with suffering, we have to find a defense mechanism for ourselves to shield us from the suffering of other people. And we create a logic in our own mind about why that person is suffering to shield us and to create a logic that we can be secure in the belief that our life will continue on untroubled. But, but it is because they must have done something wrong. They built on the wrong side of the street. They woke up at the wrong time. They, 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 whatever it is that they did, it, it may makes them different from us because we need to find a way to make sense of our world. And, and in making sense of our world, we need a world where there are rules that we can trust and where we can, can count on rules so that we can know that we don't have to hold our breath all day, that, that suffering and, and whimsical behavior will not visit our, our house and our life and our family. And therefore, they must have done something wrong. That's what's happening with the friends of Job. They are blaming Job for the suffering. And they're blaming Job for what went wrong. They're blaming Job that something he did or his children did or his family did has to be the reason. Why? Because we need to believe that, that suffering cannot visit us so whimsically. We have to believe that. Otherwise, we don't know how to live because we as human beings can't take the full burden of existence. And because we can't carry the full burden of existence, we make these, all these strange rules. But the reason why we can't carry the full burden of existence is because we have not come to our faith, a true and living faith in Jesus Christ. If, if, we, if we had a living faith, then we know that, that the world is not whimsical. That we know that love is the logic of the world. And, and we know that whatever happens, happens in God. And that we can trust God no matter how whimsical it may look. No matter how difficult it may be. No matter how dark the suffering might be. No matter how terrible it might be for people. We know that we can trust God. And, and, and that's where, where Job eventually goes. And, and, and it's important to understand that all of the, the sufferings that we experience and all the, the sufferings that people around us experience, our own reaction to them is what is really in question in our text today. 
our reaction to them. I want you to think about it. Have you ever had a good friend who went through incredible suffering and you, you pulled away because of whatever reason you had? You know, afraid that lightning might strike you too or not knowing even how to, how to speak or how to, to participate in that suffering? That, that human dilemma, that, that human dilemma is really the dilemma of the, of the, of, of the deepest dilemma of, 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 of humanity because it's asking the question, the fundamental question, can I trust this world? Or more, more profound, can I trust God? Can I trust God with my life? But, but the question posed that way is, wants to have rules that we tie God to. You see, once we say the, the righteous prosper and the wicked suffer, then we're bending rules to say, therefore, God, as long as I am being righteous, you will spare me from suffering. The rules don't say that, eh? As long as I am being righteous, you will spare me from suffering. The rules never said that. And that's what we're trying to negotiate with God. And the, 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 the thing that Job recognizes is you can't negotiate with God. There are no negotiation. So, so he has this whole court case that he, he's called and, 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 and witnesses and, and, and yet he knows, he knows that you can't negotiate because you just have to live what you live and know that God will be with you. And that's what's so difficult about suffering. It, 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 it tears the veil open. And it invites us into the deep inners of, of, of existence. And, and it asks us to live something that we are not really prepared to live. And that's by faith. Because you see, if you walk by faith, you don't walk by sight. And if you walk by faith, you, you're, not, you're not counting logic as the way that the world should work. You can't, you can't count on your predictability about the world. And therefore, anything that comes your way, you, you walk with it, you embrace it, and you move with it. Because if you walk by faith, that's what you do. You walk by faith. And whatever happens, happens. And there you encounter God too. And, and that's what Job didn't have. Now, you have to remember that Job has no notion of resurrection. Eh? We have an understanding of resurrection. So we have an understanding that this world and all that it contains is not the end. So, so what we have here in, in this text is, is one of the most beautiful cries of hope from humanity. It, it's, it's, it's really immortalized in Handel's Messiah and in Hillsong and in so many musical pieces. It, 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 it is this, this, this cry of the heart that, that that you can't get yourself around. And when Job goes through all and, and, and speaks all of the things that he has suffered and even accuses God of being unfair. And it is only Job who can accuse God because it is only Job knows the truth of his own innocence. And, and, and in his accusation of God, Job is betraying the fact that, that he believes God to be unfair, to be whimsical, to be capricious, to, 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 to strike at, at him with no great reason. He, he betrays an, an image of God that, that is not the God that we have come to know, the God of Jesus Christ. But, but, but Job's images of God live today, and so many people today still believe that. He says, then know that God has wronged me and, and drawn his net around me. Though I cry violence, I get no response. Though I call for help, there is no justice. He has blocked my ways so I cannot pass. He has shrouded my paths in darkness. He has stripped me of my honor. He has removed the crown of my head. He tears me down on every side till I am gone. He uproots my hope like a tree. These are the accusations that Job gives against God. Wow. Now, I could really emphasize with, with Job, you know, because in the face of, of suffering, how could we even understand who God is? 
He has alienated my family from me. My acquaintances are completely estranged from me. My relatives have gone away. My closest friends have forgotten me. Job is lamenting. But he's accusing God for his suffering. And he, he, he really believes that God is, is, is really whimsical, that God will just change his mind and, and visit disaster on people just so for no good reason. Come now. Talk the truth now. Come. You and, it's only me and you today. Only me and you. Have you never felt that sometimes? Have you, have you never felt like Job that God has done this suffering to you, that God is personally responsible for the suffering that you are experiencing right now? Have you never felt that way? Come on. Because that's where we humans go. And, and we will see in the end where Job is wrong, but not yet. We come to a, a partial answer today, which is the most beautiful answer in Job. Pity me, pity me, you my friends. For the hand of God has struck me. Why do you hound me down like God? Will you never have enough of my flesh? So he's saying not only God has struck him, but his friends are striking him too. Ah, would that these words of mine were written down, inscribed on some monument, with iron chisel and engraving tool, cut into the rock forever. I know that my avenger lives, and he the last will take his stand on earth. And after my awaking, he will set me close to him. And from my flesh, I shall look on God. He whom I shall see will take my part. These eyes will gaze on him and find him not aloof. Wow, wow, wow. The truth of suffering is this. It is through suffering that our faith is purified. It's through the crucible of suffering that we come to see God clearer and clearer and clearer. It is through the fires of suffering that, that, that our understanding of God becomes closer and closer to who God is in God's self. And it is only through suffering and the purification that suffering offers us that we become like refiner's fire, gold seven times refined. It is only through suffering that, that we start to grab and understand what hope is. Without an understanding of the resurrection, this is the most powerful affirmation of hope that a human who is faced with complete annihilation has ever uttered. I know that my avenger lives. And he the last will raise me up on the last day. And I will look on, on the, through this flesh, I will look on the face of God. Job, is, Job is, is pushing into the heart of mystery and in the heart of, 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 of the mystery of who God really is, tossing with, with an image of God that, that where God is, 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 is angry and vexed and, and, and striking us down and causing the suffering, and an image of God where, where God will be his avenger who will raise him up on the last and who will stand by his side and not forsake him. And Job is torn to pieces through these two images of God. As you and I are torn to pieces through these two images of God. God is not the old man with the long white beard with the stick in his hand. That is not God. God does not afflict us for amusement. That is not God. God is not the one who, who, who pours suffering on us just to smile and laugh as if God is bored somewhere in heaven. That is not God. God is the one who stands with us and, and who will, will lift us up and who when all else desert us will be at our side. God is the one who will be there through thick and thin. That is God. Because remember, we know what Job did not know. And I want you to consider for a moment and contemplate for a moment what God was doing 
when his son was being rejected and crucified. Contemplate for a moment where was God and what was God doing when, when he saw his son completely destroyed at the hands of sinful men. And when his son cried out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? What was God doing? God was weeping and mourning and groaning in travail because every time the ones that God loves suffers, God's heart is broken, open, wide to embrace, to love, and to care. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your incredible love for us, your people. And we pray this day that we may find a way to you. In the midst of the suffering of coronavirus and in the midst of the suffering of the world, in the midst of the many people who are becoming unemployed, in the midst of all those who are, who are really being destroyed by all of our health and safety, security, protocols that is, is, it is sending them into depression and into, into dark spaces in their life. Lord, I pray this day that as we experience the human suffering around us, oh God, that we may help broken humanity to say with Job, I know that my avenger lives and he the last will raise me up on the last day. This cry of human hope, Lord, may be the cry of broken humanity. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for our Holy Father and for our church. We ask, Lord, for wisdom and courage to be in this world of suffering, a sign of light and hope. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Through the intercession of St. Therese, we ask, O oh God, that you raise up missionaries in our time, missionary disciples who will give all for the sake of the gospel of Jesus Christ and who would lead humanity to know you in deep and more profound ways. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray, Father, for the many people who have placed their petitions in our prayer box, that you may bless them richly. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for Joe and Niles Rampasad on their 46th anniversary and for another couple celebrating the 42nd anniversary. We ask, Lord, your blessings upon them. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We bring our prayer to the Father through Christ Jesus, our Lord. sacrifice and mine may be pleasing and acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice from your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all this holy church. As we proclaim your wonders and center as, O Lord, we humbly implore your majesty that at her merits were pleasing to you, so too our dutiful service may find favor in your sight through Christ our Lord. 
the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for in the marvelous confession of your saints, you make your church faithful with strength ever new and offer us sure signs of your love and that your saving mysteries might be fulfilled. Their great example leads us to courage. Their fervent prayer sustains us in all we do. And so, Lord, with all the angels and the saints, we too give you thanks as an exaltation we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name, name of, of the Lord. Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the two fall that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. At the time that he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, eat of it, for this is my body, which shall be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, drink from it. For this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by your Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, and all the bishops of the AEC region, and all the clergy. Remember also, our brothers and sisters, who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. And have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Father's command, at the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. 
the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not ready that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be. If we eat of the Lord and we drink of the Lord, like the Lord we shall be, then we live with his life and we share in his love and his truth will make us free. The Lord tells us his plans, listen to commands to the Father come through me. Share his banquet of joy, eat my flesh, drink my blood, do this in my memory. This command says the Lord, I give freshly to you, love each man. come today to face God, face to face. As Job did in the midst of his suffering, so do we too today. To face God with all that has gone wrong in our world. All the many people who are starving and suffering. The many refugees and migrants who are in our shores. For the human trafficking and the sex slave that is going on. For all that has gone wrong in our church, in our families, in our own life, we come to face God today. And in facing God, we have a choice to make. To either see God as part of the problem, or to see God as part of the solution. To either live with hope, or to live with despair. And as we face God today, let us be able to affirm as Job the firm, I know, I know, I know that my Redeemer lives. And that he the last will raise me up on the last day and I will see his face. Oh Jesus, we come to you without understanding, without knowing and without being able to comprehend the mystery of human suffering. But we come to you knowing that your love is greater than we can ever understand. So we want to receive you today. Oh my Jesus, because we cannot receive you sacramentally, we want to receive you spiritually. Come to our hearts and instruct us from within in the mystery of human suffering. That as we listen, as we learn, as we commune with you, 
we may come to our redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. May the sacrament we have received, O Lord, kindle in us the force of that love with which St. Therese dedicated herself to you and longed to obtain your mercy for all through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 So pick up the book of Job and read it. Just dip in and out of it if you want and just see some of what Job is saying. We, we're in chapter 19 today. So, so even read that chapter again and, and see what, what, what Job is saying. Let, let's ask that we may come to terms with human suffering because our world is plunged into suffering these days, plunged into it. coronavirus, starvation, social unrest, all kinds of things. But only by understanding that God is not the problem. God is the solution will we find our way forward. So reach out to somebody who is suffering today. Don't shy away. Reach to them and allow them to experience love from you. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. The Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go glorifying the Lord with our life. Thanks be to God.